What's going on, everybody? Hey, you guys. Welcome back to East Africa with Willie and Rachel. We are super yes. excited to be sitting with you again. Hallelujah. We sure are. So today, Rachel, we are starting a new series, and mm -hmm. we are talking about the will of God. Yes. Hallelujah. And this is something that means a lot to me. Um, I remember actually when, as years ago, when I was seeking the Lord mm -hmm. for the will of God in our lives, and He started to reveal to me. Not only what he had for us, but also his motivations yeah. in revealing the will of God. Because I was viewing at it, viewing it as a lot harder to obtain. Right. And when I started to get a revelation of how much he desired for me to know mm -hmm. it, it became so much easier. Absolutely. To receive it, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's kind of like sure do. if it's raining outside. Uh, if it's not raining outside and you walk outside and someone says, you know, what's the quickest way to get wet? You start looking around. What can I go do? Get into the water faucet or something like that. But if you walk out, if it's already raining, yeah, you just, it's natural. You're just going to get soaked. Absolutely. Well, if, if God's already raining down the revelation of what he has for your life and it's not something he's withholding and trying to make you yes. earn, but rather he's desiring because it's part of the plan he has for you. And it's, it's, even looking at something, we're going to get into this, but even looking at something like living a, a righteous life in the sense of the way we act and stuff is all wrapped up in the in him revealing the will of God because it gives us something to go forward in, yeah, praise God. Absolutely. And so there's all these beautiful truths that we're going to get into, and I think it'll really bless you. Amen. Amen. It is going to bless you. I know it will. Amen. Okay, so the first scripture we're going to start off with is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, praise God. And this says, God... Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. before time began. Praise God. There's a few things that this really brings out. First and foremost, what we're going to talk about first is that everybody, it, this is not talking about just the apostle Paul. You know, this is not talking about some preacher. This is talking about everybody. If you are in Christ Jesus, then then your his purpose for your life was given to you was made for you before mm -hmm. the foundations of the world yep there are not some people who are called and some people who are not called to know like what god has for you and you know, I think sometimes, Rachel, even for, for, because preachers are oftentimes the one giving their testimony, like, uh, you know, yeah. on TV or wherever, that I think the body of Christ can sometimes have a, a skewed image like, oh, well, this is for a preacher. This is for, a, you know what I mean? Okay. God revealing his will for, for the preacher's life right. and stuff like that. No, it's for everybody. Absolutely. And Ephesians chapter four is very adamant of, as, as far as. The, the, the minister's job is really just to equip the saints for the work of ministry. It's all about you, praise God. If I have a call, since I'm called to ministry, my call is all about you. It's about revealing this stuff to you because he cares so much about you, yeah. praise God. And so to realize when you wake up in the morning that God, before the foundation of the world, created a plan for your life does something huge, mm -hmm. right? She I mean, does. it does something huge because as we start to open our eyes to the fact that, wow, okay, it's not me praying things down. It's not me like getting God mm -hmm. to move, to give me a, some type of a plan. He has plans. You know what? You're not going to yeah. change God's plan from to be any better than it is. It's good in Christ. And it's us by faith saying, mm -hmm. Lord, I believe the plans you have for me were created for me before the foundations of the world. And now that I've come into Christ, you're able to rain this down to me, this blessing of knowing what you've called me to do, knowing what you've called me to yeah. be, knowing wh where you've called me to live on this earth and the people you have to affect, yeah. uh, for my life to affect and these types of things. It does something because it gives your life purpose. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It definitely gives your life purpose. And every person mm -hmm. on the planet has this innate like voice inside yeah. of them right yeah. that says like Amen. what is my purpose for being on this planet mm -hmm. what am i doing here and that's why it's so important as believers that we begin to receive Amen. and understand and walk in the fact that god saw our lives before yes. we were even here and planned a purpose for each and every one of us Amen. because it completes us we Amen. have we were made for it so we have this desire to want to feel like we have a purpose mm -hmm. in life mm -hmm. and that's what god wants is to actually fill us mm -hmm. with that purpose amen so that we can begin to walk that out and walk out all that he has for amen. us amen you know it's inside of his purpose like 
we really shouldn't be finding our identity. We shouldn't be finding our purpose. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be finding like, there's so many people I think that this is why a lot of people get hooked on a hobby and it overcomes their life. Hobbies sure. are great. Okay. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. But whether it be watching sports or whether it be whatever, mm -hmm. the, each of those things have their place. So it's fine to do those things. However, they become, they, they take over yeah. a lot of believers mentality, their, their mind. They yeah. see themselves through that all the time. That's kind of who they mm -hmm. are because they haven't grabbed a hold of the fact that, wait a second, who I am is, should be wrapped up in the purpose that he has for my yeah. life. And I tell you, that's when this energy comes from. Yes. That's when this, there's nothing greater. There's no greater feeling than waking up in the morning and knowing that, man, I've got something to go yeah. towards today. And it's not about me. It's not about mm -hmm. deciding, you know, I'm going to do this in life or I'm going to do that in life, but rather seeing that he has a purpose for me. It is according, the plan he has for us is according to his own purpose. Yeah. And it's not according to us. It's not according to your family. Here's the good news. You know, whether you come from a rich family or maybe a poor family, whatever. But you know what? God has a purpose for you mm -hmm. and it's according to him. That's what this is talking about in 2 uh, Timothy 1.9. That it's, he didn't develop the plan of your life according to what your, you know, your father or your grandfather, mm -hmm. the decisions they made. So whether they made good decisions or bad decisions, the plan he has for your life isn't hanging upon yeah. what your past family did. Isn't hanging upon whether people see you and say, well, you know, you came from a, from a poor family. Therefore your plan, the plans for your life are going to be small. No, 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 that's not true. I come from the family of God Absolutely. and whatever God has put in my path to accomplish, I can accomplish. That so is good. it. Praise God. And it is contingent upon him. And this should excite us mm -hmm. to where we say that Lord, because so many people, Rachel, mm -hmm. are looking at themselves, like when they look in the mirror, they see themselves yeah. according to their family history. Yes. They see themselves according to how people have viewed their family, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et God is saying, no, no, break free from that mentality that, that of, of seeing yourself the way everybody else views you according to the flesh. We're supposed to be seeing ourselves in the spirit yeah. and then asking God, you come to God with a with a, 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 mm -hmm. a blank slate, so to speak, in your heart and saying, Lord, you show me what you have for my life. Absolutely. Because it's according to you. It's according to your purpose, not according to me or my family. And I actually like to, I want to use you as an example mm -hmm. right here because you come from a family where actually a lot of construction, mm -hmm. it's like a con construction working and yeah. like his brother owns his own business mm -hmm. and they all, everybody works in this kind of like construction. Yeah. Um, type of job. Yep. And so that's what Willie had always been used to his whole mm -hmm. life. I'm like, I'm telling your story, but no, please. Um, when you felt called yeah. to go to work at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, mm -hmm. it was like you knew you felt like God was calling you to that. And you had to reshape your own heart a I little did. bit to move out of doing what you'd always done, yeah. working with your hands, doing these types of jobs, mm -hmm. into now sitting at a computer mm -hmm. and using a phone center and using all these different things that you weren't comfortable with comfortable with. right and you had to expand your heart and realize like god was calling you according to his purpose yeah. for your life yeah not according to what willie had always done mm -hmm. not according to the natural conform yep. you know bounds of his life or his family's mm -hmm. life but your own call and purpose yeah. that god had for you Pray, that's exactly right and that was like what was that 12 13 years no 11 years ago 11 something years like that ago. whenever anyways yeah. i remember going to you and being like well maybe i should just try to be be like working more they they also had like construction jobs they were yeah. hiring for stuff like that and doing something more like more that. manual labor and you were like you asked me you said yeah but that's not exactly where you're called to do i said i know but it's what i'm yeah. comfortable with exactly and it's amazing it's because with. we always try to fall back into what yeah. we're comfortable with because it's how we view ourselves we need to begin to change that yeah. so that we can come up and hear god because in order to walk in faith we're going to have to see that he, we're going to have to come to him with a clean slate, so to speak, wipe all how we saw ourselves clean in our heart and say, yeah. Lord, who am I? You show me my, your purpose. You show my me. Life so I can Absolutely. Walk in it. All right, you guys, we love you and we are always blessed to be with you. We'll see you next time.